Hi there, welcome once again to the Ducoscopy TV studio here in Geneva. I'm Ben Jones. Alongside me to discuss online privacy is Dr. Rebecca Jorgensen from Webster University. Once again, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me. So as I say, we're discussing online privacy today. We've seen recently with some celebrities that some A-list celebrities have had their personal images stolen, so to speak, and displayed online. So with online storage becoming more prominent with services like the cloud, how dangerous is this? How, how easy is it for people to steal online? The first thing I would say is do not do anything online that you would not go out in the middle of the street and do uh, in public because your privacy online is virtually nil unless you've taken extraordinary efforts to encrypt your messages and things like that. But for the most part, uh, online privacy is an increasingly serious problem whether you're a celebrity or not and also whether you're a business or not. So is it becoming easier for people to steal information online and can you discuss some of the techniques that people are using? In the first case uh, it is becoming in some ways less easy to steal for the average person and yet the techniques that are being used to um, take material are becoming more sophisticated and also heading in directions that people didn't imagine. For example, when we thought about sharing information online, the original concept was that we were sharing information that was of value to us, that we could use. We never thought that it would be sharing our personal medical information, our personal sexual lives, or other things like that, and yet increasingly that's happening. The second part of that is that when you make a deal with a server to use their services, they have access to your material, and part of that is the cost of doing business. The second part of it is that they are in turn doing their business by sharing that with third parties over which you have no control and you don't know who they are. That's where it gets a little bit dicey. Okay, and finally, can you discuss some of the techniques that countries or companies are using to try and tackle this issue and prevent this theft of online personal information? The first thing to understand about this is that basically in different parts of the world, the relationship between businesses and countries and governments can, be, can vary quite a bit. In the United States, for example, businesses are protected as a private entity and their contracts with the people are considered to be part of the cost of doing business. So uh, in the case of Google, which is located in California, they make a contract with you which says we have the right to do this, in which case a government may not just walk in and say, no, you don't have the right to do that. In other countries, that's not the situation. So you have a profound disconnect between the right to do business as it's represented in certain countries versus uh, the ideas that governments are supposed to protect and control that right elsewhere. So what the businesses are trying to do in cases where government, as in the case of WikiLeaks and other things, are forcing uh, the turnover of information, is trying to let the consumer know that they're doing everything they can to not allow that. At the same time, they in turn are turning over information to their own parties. So, um, so there's both protections going against certain things they're advertising to the public that they have filed legal suits to protect and, and so on. But on the other hand, um, we need to look into whether there's a more thorough mechanism that could indeed protect both the rights of the public and businesses. The other thing that is at risk here are other businesses because there's protections within these groups, but then the information of these other businesses is taken and that can uh, prevent uh, competition and, and healthy business structures. Fantastic. Rebecca, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure being here. And thank you for watching. Do make sure you keep clicking back to Ducoscopy TV as we'll be bringing you plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now.